Through the second law of thermodynamics, we know that a spontaneous process is one that involves an increase in the entropy of the universe. So we have the change in entropy of the universe is greater than zero, then the process or reaction is spontaneous. We can split the entropy change of the universe up into two components, the change in entropy of the surroundings and the change in entropy of our system. Measuring the change in entropy of the system is fairly straightforward because it's the contained part of the universe that we're studying. However, it's difficult to measure the entropy change in the surroundings because it's the rest of the universe. It's quite big. How do we get a measure of that? So what would be convenient to us is if we could find something equivalent to the change in entropy of the surroundings that was in terms of the systems so that would be more easily measurable. Well, we know the entropy change of the surroundings is equal to the heat flow into the surroundings over the temperature. Since any heat that flows out of the system must flow into the surroundings, it must be that this is equal to the negative heat flow of the system over T. Now if we constrain our process to constant pressure, then this heat flow of the system is simply the change in enthalpy. So we can say that this is equal to the negative change in enthalpy over t. Now if we plug that back into our equation, we have that the change in entropy of the universe is equal to the negative change in enthalpy over temperature plus the change in entropy of the system. Multiplying both sides through by negative t, we have negative t times the change in entropy of the universe is equal to the enthalpy change of the system minus the temperature times the change in entropy of the system. We see now that we have a measure of spontaneity that relies only on values we can measure of our system. The heat flow at constant pressure, or the enthalpy, and the entropy change of our system. We define this as a new state variable, which we call delta G, or Gibbs free energy. We can see that the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to the negative temperature times the change in entropy of the universe. Because a spontaneous process involves an increase in the entropy of the universe, and we have a negative sign here, that means any time delta G decreases, so when delta G is less than zero, we will have a spontaneous process or reaction. When delta G is less than zero, we call the process exergonic. When delta G is larger than zero, that means that there's been a decrease in the entropy of the universe, so that process would be non-spontaneous. We'd also call such a process endergonic. 